house or eat it there. You'll love the food that we prepare. To eat up the street. And she ate down the street. So what got you here? Tasha. And taco, puffin, taco, puffin, taco, puffin. The 1970s were a vibrant decade filled with unique and popular restaurants that many people loved. However, not all of them could stand the test of time due to various challenges that led to their downfall. So join us as we explore 20 famous restaurants in the 1970s that went bankrupt. You can go to Sambo's day or night. The food is good, the price is right. You can eat dinner anytime. And you can dine for $1.99 at Sambo's. Sambo's. Sambo's was a popular restaurant chain in the 1970s known for its pancakes and family-friendly atmosphere. At its peak, Sambo's had over 1,100 locations across the U.S., including states like California, Texas, and Florida. People love going to Sambo's for a hearty breakfast or a casual meal. However, the chain faced significant controversy over its name and theme, which were considered racially insensitive. The name Sambo's was associated with racist imagery and stereotypes, leading to protest and public outcry. As social attitudes changed, the controversy grew, putting pressure on the chain to rebrand. Despite efforts to change some of the restaurant names to The Jolly Tiger, the negative publicity took a toll on the business. Financial struggles compounded the issue, and by the early 1980s, Sambo's began closing its doors. The combination of public backlash and economic difficulties ultimately led to the chain's bankruptcy and the closure of all its locations. Sambo's grappled with controversy and financial struggles, leading to its ultimate demise, and another beloved restaurant chain faced its challenges. What unique menu item made Lums a favorite spot for families, and why did it too eventually close its doors by the early 1980s? You know why I come to Lums, good buddy? They grill the steaks just perfect. And the fish fry dinner is so tender and delicious. Lums. Lums was a well-loved restaurant chain in the 70s, famous for its unique hot dogs steamed in beer. This quirky and tasty offering made Lums a favorite spot for many families and food lovers. At its peak, Lums had over 400 locations across the U.S., including popular states like Florida, New York, and California. The chain's casual atmosphere and distinctive menu items attracted a loyal customer base who enjoyed their meals in a fun, relaxed setting. However, by the early 1980s, Lums began facing significant financial challenges. The economic downturn during this period made it difficult for the chain to maintain its profitability. Additionally, changes in consumer preferences and increasing competition from other fast food chains put further strain on Lums' operations. Despite efforts to revive the brand, Lums filed for bankruptcy in 1982. Unable to recover from its financial woes, the chain closed its doors for good by 1983, ending an era for fans of their famous beer-steamed hot dogs. Tonight is inescapably well, Here's to the great outdoors Tonight is unmistakably And here's to the great indoors Steak and Ale Steak and Ale Steak and Ale was a popular restaurant chain in the 1970s, well-loved for its affordable steaks and extensive salad bars. It offered a charming dining experience that attracted many families and steak enthusiasts. At its height, Steak and Ale had numerous locations across the U.S., including states like Texas, Florida, and California. The chain's combination of good food at reasonable prices made it a favorite dining spot for many. Steak and Ale faced growing financial challenges over the years. Competition from other dining establishments increased, and the economic climate made it difficult to sustain its business model. Changing consumer taste also played a role as more people began seeking diverse dining options. These factors contributed to a decline in sales and profitability. By the early 2000s, Steak and Ale could not overcome these difficulties and filed for bankruptcy. The financial strain became too much to bear, leading to the closure of all its locations. We have fresh ideas at Red Barn, like a salad bar for you. Red Barn's big new salad bar is paradise. It's a garden of Eaton. Red Barn. Red Barn was a well-known restaurant chain in the 1970s, famous for its distinctive barn-shaped buildings and self-service salad bars. This unique design and dining concept made it a popular choice for families and casual diners. 
At its peak, Red Barn had around 400 locations across the U.S., with a strong presence in states like Ohio, New York, and Pennsylvania. People love the relaxed atmosphere and the convenience of customizing their salads at the self-service bars. Despite its initial success, Red Barn began facing financial struggles in the late 1970s and early 80s. The restaurant industry had become increasingly competitive, and Red Barn found it hard to keep up with larger fast food chains that were expanding rapidly. Additionally, changes in consumer preferences and eating habits started to impact their business. Efforts to revitalize the brand and menu were not enough to overcome the financial difficulties. The economic downturn during this period further exacerbated the chain's troubles, leading to declining sales and profitability. By the late 1980s, Red Barn could no longer sustain its operations and gradually closed all its locations. Daddy Rogers Roaster, it's the wood that makes it good. You're going to love this food. Kenny Rogers Roasters. Kenny Rogers Roasters was a popular restaurant chain in the 1990s, known for its delicious rotisserie chicken and homestyle side dishes. Founded by country music star Kenny Rogers, the chain quickly gained a loyal following. At its peak, Kenny Rogers Roasters had numerous locations across the U.S., including states like California, Florida, and Texas. Diners appreciated the wholesome hearty meals and the cozy welcoming atmosphere. The chain began to struggle financially in the late 1990s as increased competition from other fast food and casual dining restaurants made it difficult for Kenny Rogers Roasters to maintain its market share. Additionally, changes in consumer preferences toward healthier dining options put pressure on the chain to adapt. In 1998, Kenny Rogers Roasters declared bankruptcy, signaling the start of its decline. Although some locations remained open for a few more years, the company could not recover from its financial woes. By 2011, all U.S. locations had closed their doors. Kenny Rogers Roasters captivated diners in the 1990s with its homestyle rotisserie chicken. However, as it faced financial struggles, another beloved chain from a previous era had already succumbed to competitive pressures. What happened to Burger Chef, the pioneering fast food giant of the 1970s? Burger Chef presents Burger Chef. Burger Chef was a beloved restaurant chain in the 1970s, famous for its flame broiled burgers and for pioneering the kids' meal concept with its fun meal. This innovative approach made it a popular spot for families and burger enthusiasts. At its peak, Burger Chef had over 1,000 locations across the U.S., including states like Indiana, Illinois, and Ohio. People enjoyed the tasty burgers and the family friendly atmosphere. Despite its popularity, Burger Chef began facing financial difficulties in the 1980s. The fast food industry became more competitive, with major players like McDonald's and Burger King expanding rapidly. Burger Chef struggled to keep up with these larger chains and began losing market share. In 1982, the chain was sold to Hardee's, which initially continued to operate some locations under the Burger Chef name. However, Hardee's eventually decided to rebrand all Burger Chef locations to Hardee's or close them down. By 1996, the last Burger Chef restaurant had closed its doors. The chain's legacy lives on through its contributions to fast food innovation, but it could not survive the intense competition and changing market dynamics. The home of good, good food is Howard Johnson's. Now have Howard Johnson's good, good food at home. Howard Johnson's. Howard Johnson's was a hugely popular restaurant chain in the 70s, known for its distinctive orange roofs and reliable American fare. At its peak, Howard Johnson's had over 1,000 locations across the U.S., making it a familiar site for travelers along highways. States like New York, Massachusetts, and Florida were home to many of these eateries. Families loved stopping in Howard Johnson's for a meal during road trips, enjoying dishes like fried clams and ice cream. However, by the late 1980s and 1990s, the chain faced significant challenges. Competition from fast food giants and changing dining preferences led to a decline in customers. Howard Johnson's struggled to modernize its menu and branding to keep up pace with the evolving market. 
These difficulties resulted in financial troubles and the company eventually declared bankruptcy. Most of the restaurants closed and by the early 2000s, the once thriving chain had dwindled to just a few locations. Today, only one Howard Johnson's restaurant remains open, serving as a nostalgic reminder of a bygone era. Make your day at Pop and Taco, just wait and see, oh how good Pop and Taco can be. Pop and Taco. Pop and Taco was a popular restaurant chain in the 70s, and Californians especially loved it. Known for its unique menu that offered a mix of tacos and hot dogs, Pup and Taco provided a fun and casual dining experience. With over 100 locations, primarily in California and a few in New Mexico, it became a favorite spot for those seeking a quick and tasty meal. Notwithstanding its popularity, Pup and Taco faced challenges in the fast food market. The competition from larger chains made it difficult for Pup and Taco to expand and maintain profitability. The varied menu, while popular, also made operations more complex and costly compared to more streamlined competitors. In 1984, Taco Bell saw an opportunity and bought out Pup and Taco. The acquisition allowed Taco Bell to expand its presence by converting the Pup and Taco locations into Taco Bells. This buyout marked the end of Pup and Taco as all its restaurants were either rebranded or closed. White Tower Hamburgers White Tower Hamburgers was a popular restaurant chain in the 1970s known for its small square hamburgers similar to those of White Castle. At its peak, White Tower had about 230 locations across the U.S. with a strong presence in states like New York, Ohio, and Michigan. The chain attracted customers with its tasty burgers and distinctive white fortress-like buildings. White Tower faced significant challenges over the years, and the chain was embroiled in numerous lawsuits from White Castle, which claimed that White Tower had copied its building design and menu offerings. These legal battles were costly and damaging to White Tower's reputation. Additionally, the fast food market became increasingly competitive, making it difficult for White Tower to keep up with larger, more aggressive competitors. Financial struggles mounted as consumer preferences shifted and operational costs increased. Unable to adapt to the changing market dynamics and overcome its legal and financial issues, White Tower gradually closed its locations. By 2004, the once thriving chain had shut down its last restaurant. As White Tower hamburgers faced increasing challenges in the competitive fast food market, another beloved chain to the 70s was also grappling with evolving consumer taste and rising cost. How did Bresler's ice cream, once a family favorite, fare in this shifting landscape? Bresler's ice cream. Bresler's ice cream was a beloved ice cream chain in the 1970s, cherished for its delicious ice cream treats and a wide variety of flavors. At its peak, Bresler's had numerous locations across the U.S., with a strong presence in states like Illinois, California, and New York. Families and ice cream enthusiasts frequented Bresler's for its tasty cones, sundaes, and milkshakes. Changes in consumer preferences and increased competition from larger ice cream chains made it difficult for Bresler's to maintain its customer base. The rising cost of ingredients and operations further strained the chain's profitability. In 1987, recognizing the challenges ahead, Bresler's ice cream was sold. However, the new owners struggled to revitalize the brand in the face of ongoing market pressures. Over the years, many of Bresler's locations were gradually phased out or closed down entirely. By 2007, the once beloved ice cream chain had disappeared from the American landscape, unable to withstand the changes in the market and the competitive environment. The Original House of Pies The Original House of Pies was a cherished restaurant chain in the 1970s, renowned for its vast selection of delicious pies. It had multiple locations across the U.S., particularly in states like California and Texas. Diners flocked to the Original House of Pies for its comforting atmosphere and the irresistible aroma of freshly baked pies. However, the chain faced legal troubles in the 1980s, which led to its downfall. Lawsuits and financial challenges became overwhelming, causing the original House of Pies to close its doors for good in 1986. 
In spite of its closure, the legacy of the original House of Pies lives on through some independent locations that continue to operate today. These independent establishments strive to preserve the tradition of offering a wide variety of mouthwatering pies, keeping the memory of the original House of Pies alive for pie lovers everywhere. Guess what's cooking now at Yankee Doodle Dandy? Chicken. Crispy fried chicken, plump pieces fresh, never frozen, twice dipped in our special seasonings, then deep fried so it's tender and juicy. Yankee Doodle Dandy. Yankee Doodle Dandy was a patriotic-themed burger chain that gained popularity in the 1970s. Known for its American-themed decor and menu items, it appealed to customers seeking a nostalgic dining experience. The chain had locations across the United States, particularly in states with a strong sense of patriotism, such as Texas, Virginia, and California. Families and burger enthusiasts enjoyed the unique atmosphere and the flavorful burgers. However, by the late 1980s, Yankee Doodle Dandy began facing financial difficulties. Changes in consumer preferences, increased competition from larger fast food chains, and economic challenges contributed to its downfall. The chain struggled to maintain profitability amidst declining sales and rising operating costs. Ultimately, these challenges proved insurmountable and Yankee Doodle Dandy closed its doors in the late 1980s. Despite its patriotic theme and initial popularity, the chain could not adapt to the changing landscape of the fast food industry. As patrons savored their patriotic burgers at Yankee Doodle Dandy, what fate awaited the Boston Sea Party as it navigated the same turbulent waters of changing consumer taste and fierce competition in the restaurant industry? Feast your eyes on the Boston Sea Party feast. Boston Sea Party. Boston Sea Party was a seafood chain inspired by the U.S. Bicentennial that gained popularity in the 70s. Known for its fresh seafood offerings and patriotic theme, it attracted diners across the U.S. The chain had locations in various states, including Massachusetts, Florida, and California, with a total of over 50 restaurants nationwide. Customers enjoyed the maritime ambiance and the tasty seafood dishes. However, the Boston Sea Party faced financial challenges over the years. Competition from other seafood chains, fluctuations in seafood prices, and changing consumer preferences contributed to its struggles. The chain found it difficult to maintain profitability amidst these obstacles. By the early 2000s, Boston Sea Party was unable to overcome its financial difficulties and was forced to close its doors. Despite its unique theme and tasty menu offerings, the chain ultimately succumbed to the pressures of the competitive restaurant industry. The closure of the Boston Sea Party marked the end of an era for fans of its seafood delights and patriotic ambiance. Fresh ingredients, hearty helpings, and big, bold flavors. Bugaboo Creek Steakhouse. Cause we got flavors for you. Bugaboo Creek Steakhouse. Bugaboo Creek Steakhouse was a popular restaurant chain in the 1970s and beyond. Recognized for its unique animatronic mascots and hearty steakhouse fare, it had locations across the U.S. with a significant presence in states like Massachusetts, New York, and Pennsylvania. Diners were drawn to Bugaboo Creek Steakhouse for its entertaining atmosphere and flavorful steaks. In spite of its initial popularity, Bugaboo Creek Steakhouse encountered financial difficulties in the late 2000s. The restaurant industry faced challenges due to economic downturns and changing consumer preferences. Additionally, the novelty of the animatronic mascots, while initially appealing, may have lost its charm over time, failing to attract new customers. By 2010, Bugaboo Creek Steakhouse filed for bankruptcy, unable to overcome its financial woes. Despite efforts to revitalize the brand, the chain ultimately closed all its locations by 2016. Cuckoo Roo Cuckoo Roo was a renowned restaurant chain in the 1970s, celebrated for its healthy chicken dishes. Its flavorful menu and focus on health-conscious options made it a favorite among diners. The chain had locations primarily in California, with some outlets in states like Nevada and Arizona. Customers appreciated Cuckoo Roo for its delicious yet nutritious meals. Despite its popularity, Cuckoo Roo faced challenges in the early 2000s. 
high rental cost and prime locations, coupled with intense competition from larger fast food chains, put pressure on the chain's profitability. Additionally, changing consumer preferences towards more diverse dining options further impacted Cuckoo Roo's business. By 2003, Cuckoo Roo was unable to sustain its operations and closed down all its locations. The combination of high rent, stiff competition, and shifting consumer taste led to its downfall. The closure of Cuckoo Roo marked the end of an era for fans of its healthy chicken dishes, highlighting the challenges faced by restaurants in a dynamic market. Diners reminisce about the healthy chicken delights of Cuckoo Roo, but did Chi Chi's face similar challenges, or was its downfall triggered by something entirely unexpected? What's in Chi Chi's new Sonoran sampler? Ba -ba 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 -burro. A grande burro and Chi Chi's. Chi Chi's was a beloved Mexican restaurant chain that gained popularity in the 1970s. Known for its festive atmosphere and delicious Mexican cuisine, it had numerous locations across the United States. Chi Chi's was particularly popular in states like Ohio, Pennsylvania, and California, where it attracted diners seeking tasty Mexican fare. However, in 2003, Chi Chi's faced a devastating setback when an outbreak of hepatitis A was traced back to green onions served at one of its locations in Pennsylvania. The outbreak resulted in several deaths and hundreds of illnesses, severely damaging Chi Chi's reputation and finances. The chain struggled to recover from the negative publicity and legal ramifications that followed the outbreak. As a result, Chi Chi's was forced to file for bankruptcy and ultimately closed down all of its locations. The hepatitis outbreak and its repercussions proved impossible for the once popular Mexican restaurant chain, leading to its closure and marking the end of an era for fans of its flavorful dishes and vibrant ambiance. It's the end of an era. The last little tavern is closed. And for many customers and employees, the little tavern shop with those delicious little hamburgers and french fries was a hallowed place. Little Tavern. Little Tavern was a popular fast food chain in the 1970s, recognized for its small castle-like buildings and tasty burgers. It had multiple locations, primarily in the mid-Atlantic region of the U.S., with a strong presence in states like Maryland, Virginia, and Washington, D.C. Diners appreciated the unique charm of the tiny restaurants and the delicious, affordable burgers they offered. However, over time, Little Tavern encountered financial difficulties. Changes in consumer preferences, increasing competition from larger fast food chains, and rising operational cost contributed to its challenges. Despite efforts to adapt, the chain struggled to remain profitable. By 2008, Little Tavern was unable to overcome its financial woes and closed its last remaining location. The closure marked the end of an era for fans of the beloved burger chain, illustrating the challenges faced by smaller fast food establishments in an ever-evolving market. Come on and taste a real good time at Valley's. Come on and bring the family down to Valley's. Valley's Steakhouse. Valley Steakhouse was a popular East Coast chain in the 1970s, specializing in steaks and lobsters. It gained a loyal following for its delicious food and welcoming atmosphere. Valley's had multiple locations across the U.S., primarily concentrated along the East Coast in states like New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. Diners enjoyed the high-quality steaks and fresh seafood offered by Valley's. Nevertheless, in the 1970s, Valley Steakhouse was overexpanded opening numerous new locations in a short period. This rapid expansion led to financial strain and operational challenges for the chain. Despite its initial popularity, Valley struggled to sustain profitability amidst the growing competition and economic fluctuations. By the year 2000, Valley Steakhouse was unable to overcome its financial difficulties and closed down all its locations. The chain's overexpansion, coupled with increased competition and economic pressures, ultimately led to its downfall. Meanwhile, across the nation at Wimpy's, a beloved burger joint, a similar story of competition and financial strain unfolded. But could Wimpy's fate have been different if Valley's overexpansion mistake had been avoided? Come on over to my place. Wimpy's. 
Wimpy's was a popular burger chain in the 1970s, known for its tasty burgers and casual dining experience. It had multiple locations across the U.S., with a significant presence in states like California, Texas, and Illinois. Diners appreciated Wimpy's for its flavorful burgers and friendly service. However, in the early 1980s, Wimpy's faced financial difficulties as it struggled to compete with larger fast food chains. The rise of giants like McDonald's and Burger King posed significant challenges for smaller chains like Wimpy's. These larger competitors had more resources and broader reach, making it difficult for Wimpy's to maintain its market share. As a result, Wimpy's was forced to declare bankruptcy, unable to sustain its operations in the face of stiff competition. The chain's closure marked the end of an era for fans of its delicious burgers and laid-back atmosphere. Wimpy's ultimately could not withstand the intense competition in the fast food industry. Deanne had her eighth birthday party at Farrell's. <laughs> Even the Beasley brothers had fun. <laughs> when Jake the Snake had his birthday at Farrell's, Hi, the whole group wanted to come. Farrell's Ice Cream Parlor. Farrell's Ice Cream Parlor was a beloved restaurant chain in the 1970s, celebrated for its huge sundaes and lively ambiance. It had locations across the United States, with a strong presence in states like California, Oregon, and Washington. Families and ice cream enthusiasts flocked to Farrell's for its delicious treats and entertaining atmosphere. But in the early 2000s, Farrell's faced financial challenges. Rising operating costs, changing consumer preferences, and increased competition contributed to its struggles. Despite efforts to revitalize the brand, the chain could not overcome its financial woes. As a result, Farrell's Ice Cream Parlor was forced to close its doors, marking the end of an era for fans of its extravagant Sundays and festive atmosphere. The closure was a sad moment for many who had fond memories of enjoying ice cream treats at Farrell's. Still, financial difficulties ultimately led to the demise of this iconic chain.